good day to you, partner. I'm Dean, and I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken cave. Canadian's not going to be drinking. Nope. Nope. Hey, guys. We'd Solo here, a.k.a. The Skeleton King. And Top Wooks here. Just Wooks. I don't know. This is the third <laughs> time we've done the intro. I'm out, I'm, out of, I'm out of ideas. I think I have to avoid making any noise when you talk. Somehow, I think when I talk, my mic starts to pick up my headset, and that's what happens, because I just heard it right then. But... That was really funny, so I have to... Don't make me laugh, okay? Yes, exactly. Just basically say nothing. Oh, calm down, Top Wooks. Look, he's already salty. It's because he had a long, hard day at work. It's not even over yet. This is my <laughs> late lunch. This is his late lunch. Oh, man, he works too much. Okay, so we need to have some order on this. So I think what I was planning on anyways is just doing patch notes now and then doing tier list in our next video or else it would just have taken too long anyways, right? Yeah, I think that makes sense. There's a lot of things yeah. to cover and it's probably worth spending some time on a few things. Okay, so you probably have a better idea than this before. I just want to bring up, they did do a lot of good work trying to bring in the settings menu of PD2 into the actual graphic user interface of Diablo. And so shout outs to that because I don't know how easy that was, but regardless, it looks pretty nice and it's very seamless. So that was very cool. Yeah, I kind of actually just tested it for the first time today on open beta, but it works, you know, it's it's pretty seamless. You got to like click around a bit if you're used to the old uh, bottom left settings, but it's it's pretty, pretty nice. Honestly, there were a bunch I, of times no I... Yeah, I would forget, and I'd be trying to find my settings button, and I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Oh, right. Yeah, um, yeah he's also moving around and stuff, which is annoying, so. But, yeah. well, it's a good chance. I like it. Yeah. And then they made the allocated loot system, which I think is going to be a shit show, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool that it's there. I will never on purpose use it. I mean, if I join a game that has it, whatever like i don't really care for it but you know some people do so it doesn't hurt you can turn it off so you can't really complain about it i guess yeah right um yeah. more stat screen key combos which are always good because who the fuck likes to push the button 300 times yeah val valid i guess the other one back as well like the the stat home and stuff right like that's pretty cool i don't know if we talked about that last time but you know, you could set your home to be like Act 4, probably is the best. Um, so you always join in Act 4 no matter where you leave, which is really good. Trap farmers or um, burial farming something, or arcane. So it's pretty cool. It's Dude, Act 2 is absolutely atrocious and Act 3. <laughs> and so just the fact that you never have to go to the good Act again... And you can just, Act 4 is always the best act, right? It literally is. Yeah, yeah. Unless unless you're just going to be doing maps or Ubers, in which case, I guess, just staying in Act 5 would save time. But if you're doing basically anything else in the game, Act 4 is superior. Um, uh, on killer proc effects will now proc from spells. I'm not sure how much of an impact that will be. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not sure. I didn't really see anything on that, so I think it's... Yeah, I don't see many whatever. people using spells to do that but maybe at some point there'll be a meme build and elemental large charms are at three percent which is a pretty big deal and i want to apologize because i think too many people focus on the fact that four percent makes it viable but after they nerfed it back to three percent it's they're still viable it's just not always now do you go all lcs you might have to mix and i think Having more player choice here is probably the better option. And yes, I'm sure there are some builds out there that really miss out on that 1%. But I think for the most part, this is probably a good change. 
Yeah, I think in the long run it will be. I think they're gonna have to fine tune some skills because there's some skills where it's like a overall one few percent difference between the large charms and the grand charm. So you're just gonna take a grand charm because you get a small charm with it, right? Um, for your res and stuff. But for a lot of other builds, the three percent will still be better at least at fifty percent. Um, like you said, a mix. So it, it's okay. It's gonna hurt all the meme proc builds, of course, because they just lost, you know. 18 percent but i think that all that kind of stuff can be fixed over time so the only issue i see is that people have it in mind that and this was discussed in beta but in mind that they suck they're not going to pick them up and there'll just be less large terms mm. uh, which might be frustrating but maybe that'll kind of balance itself out over time counter argument they're, they'll be pretty easy to find because you'll only get the threes so <laughs> well, no, but it's what they did is they changed the affix from three to four um, to be just three, but that there still is the two, like the lower roll ones. There, it doesn't say there's, that. There's, I thought they actually took out the two. They didn't. No. So Okay, so they, if they the, took the out the two, of, I think that would actually yeah. make sense now. Yeah, no, there's still going to be the lower ones. It's just now there, there was an affix that was three to four percent. Now that affix is just three, but all the other ones still exist. So, I guess they don't want it to be too down. good early on if it always rolled three. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they should think about that. Because okay, I and thought, the, yeah. yeah, and two is used. To, two percent is LLD. I think, if my memory's oh, so that. you actually so, have to have both because oh, okay, yeah. LLD does matter. Although, oh, yeah, no, okay, LLD's fun. <laughs> <Yeah, that>. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that it, yeah, that's all it is. Let's see. Primeval Soul drop rate. I like the Blackstone Stone will now always drop because I don't think people need more reason or more incentive to make money off of Uber Tristram farming. Um, right? Yeah, this is a big change. Most people wanted, well, a lot of the people that were upset at Uber Trist wanted it removed entirely from Uber Trist. This is another way. No. I guess it's going to be capped at one per time instead of being up to three, is my yeah. understanding of this change. Yeah. Um, which means that. People should not pay for their service. Like, keys or your torch don't add anything because the person's getting a BFF. That is their payment. People should keep that in mind early, but we'll see what happens. Well, you know, how, how economies work and how people who pay work, <laughs> you can't really control yeah. that. I like curse yeah. resistance cap going up. I think curse resistance is underused and should be used more, so... I like, I like it as well. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy with that one. I, I like curse resistance, so it's kind of new, some changes they added there later we see as well. So it's pretty cool. By the way, we don't got to go all over the corrupted zones, but I do like the no. fact that the corrupted zones have more areas to them now. So, like for instance, it's bizarre ruined temple disused vein. So all sub zones are included. Like I mm -hmm. want to be um, farming glacial drifter frozen as a fire golem or glacial drifter so that i do think that's kind of cool yeah it's a much better change for the people that were complaining about the small zones and stuff now it's like kind of balanced that they you know as as you said glacial drifter frozen yeah. kind of equals chaos sanctuary and chaos is just by itself so kind of works and then i did check out um at least abaddon it is way bigger hmm. it is way okay. bigger so I don't know if any build wants to farm it. I know some actually do, but it's like it feels way better to farm. But, you know, it's still a vanilla area, so the density, yes, it's not as good as a map. Um, I, get, I guess it's probably okay your day one, day two. Like, it's not yeah. too, there's not a lot of bad mobs getting there, but there's bad mobs inside there, isn't there? No, like, isn't I don't. There dolls I, or souls or something in one of them? Maybe it's the in, other one. In one of them, yes, but Abaddon was easy as yeah. shit. Yeah, okay. no, I, I wasn't yeah. scared at all in Abaddon, but yes, no, please, hardcore players. By the way, I was watching Kieran play hardcore builds because I was trying to do a little bit of research for this video too, and man, hardcore players play so safe. But, you know, if you die, you die, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, it happens. I mean, I'm not to say I'm not one that hasn't died on hardcore. So. Yeah, I, I don't remember the last time I made out of normal on hardcore, so, and I've tried a couple times. <laughs> So mercenaries have been completely reworked. I don't know if you want to talk about oh, the new maps. The new maps look sick. I'll say that. 
actually. Yeah. I haven't really played them, but I've seen people play them, and they look very, very cool. Some of the best design maps in a while. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. How, did you skip all, like, the bug, D2GLs? The, did you, the do you want that? Did... Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, no. Okay. Just, there you go. okay. Yeah, the new maps, they look cool. I think everyone really likes that Demon Road as well. Yes, That seems yes. to be the standout, like the ROB type feel. So yeah. I like that. And mercenaries. Okay, mercenaries were completely obliterated basically across the board except for Act 4. Act 1, all mercs have reduced base damage now because there are issues with one hands on mercenaries. And also they didn't like mercs, excuse me, doing too much damage because Act 2 doesn't really use a one hand unless you crafted something ridiculous. But they don't want mercs to just carry you anymore, which they literally did. On the other hand, I think it also reduces people's uses for act two and act five which already don't see a lot of play but act one did need serious nerfs but they went too far and um my thought on this is is at least it's going to be different because act one has been a problem for a while and act five and act two should still be viable um act three was too good budget act three holy shock will still be insane in game and um act four is a problem that's how i look at it i mean they toned it down a bit now for open beta uh but it's still pretty strong and the way i saw can talking about it in beta chat is that it's going to be next season that they really really fix it because right now it's still using paladin skills like like foe and um not mercenary specific ones so they're not really able to balance it easily um but next season they'll create new mercenary versions and it'll be it'll be a bit better they're having a hard time balancing the existing skills to be not so strong early, but good late. Right now, it's kind of crazy good early, and not so good late. Pretty good late. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. usable. Like, they're 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 usable. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, the funny thing I found was is I actually think the dark mercenary is just better because he's more consistent. But when the light merc actually casts fist of heavens on the right targets, he is pretty legit. Yeah. The only benefit of the act, the light one, is that he only casts damaging things, basically. Like, I find the, act, the dark sometimes is casting amp a lot, sometimes not a lot, but it's, I think, I don't know, I found that the light was a bit more consistent. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm still team dark, but I think, okay, how about this? For Chaos Sanctuary, I don't see how you could do better than the dark mercenary early on. I don't know, the light one's so good for Chaos. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nice, so... All right. I mean, both are going to be workable. Okay. By the way, were you surprised that he can face tank Diablo now with budget gear? Because I just don't get it, how he can face tank Diablo by himself. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know either. He's way tanky now, by the way, so he doesn't die anymore, yeah. at least like he used to. Um, do you want to talk about uh, Ubers or PvP at all? Because I don't have much to say about PvP other than it should be played more. But, I mean, I don't play PvP, yeah. so what do I get to say? <laughs> yeah, Ubers, I mean... Ubers, we don't really know anything about the new one. Yeah. Um, the, entering the fight earlier doesn't really change much of anything. There's a few fixes to Declone and Rathma, but to be honest, not much has changed. The only thing is the Rathma, the one that I was pushing to get changed, has finally changed, which, which you can't split the, the two bosses. They'll always follow you. So you can't fight one at a time. So that was something I was uh, really pushing to get changed, and it did, so I'm happy about that. But aside from that, it should be business as as usual okay so let's see i have no idea how long we've talked but it's 7 18 we're at skills and yeah. um do you want to talk about amazon at all uh we can just go quickly through the, the classes yeah. i think so like amazon we see the cold arrows reduced uh, it was really strong so that kind of makes sense same with fire arrow both of those builds were just really strong uh, so it makes sense that they kind of got nerfed a little bit. Immo, uh, not too much to say on that one, to be honest. Multi-shot, um, it got buffed, which is pretty cool. But also the proc now off the three middle arrows. I don't know if you'd ever run an amp bow to begin with or just try to get a big damage one to, to one shot. It's it's hard to say there, but it's at least kind of making multi-shot better again, which I think is good because it's kind of like a quintessential D2 build, in my opinion. I remember playing it back in the day. So I like to see it there. And then lightning 
Zon's kind of, um, you know, charge strike buffed, which is pretty cool. You kind of get it for free now because Lightning Fury is removed. Uh, so if you're running a LS build, you get CS for free, which means you're really good at killing bosses. So that's definitely cool. And the big one, decoys are finally fixed. So they're actually... Um, all right, they so were, they can ordered. actually crit. Okay, so um, yeah. strafe was bunch buffed a bit, but I don't think that's going to matter. But decoys being yeah. buffed, it does make me want to look at summons on again. But yeah. the one thing that I think is weird about multiple sh um, MS is mm -hmm. it was still a good build. But, yeah, I was. mean, it was gated by getting a really good bow, so I guess it's just to make it a little less hard. Yeah, I mean, it's the it's it was always the joke build of if you have like 200 HR, just build an MS bond, right? So, it's like, yeah. so I think now maybe it's going to be a bit quicker to get. So like, I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so I want to say one thing about Assassin. I think Mind Blast is annoying, and that's the only thing I know about it right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, very small changes to Phoenix Strike, Chain Lightning Sentry, Wake of Fire. Not much change there at all. Just slightly nerfed, which they're all going to be fine. Fire Blast and Shock Web buffs. I mean, they're really trying to push these as boss killers, like, you know, not boss bosses, but like map yeah. bosses and stuff or Ubers. Yeah, sure. Bait, nerf, or rebalance. I think that's probably a good change. Uh, curse duration. Uh, increase so that's kind of cool so that's a reason another reason to run fade which is kind of wild um fist of fire was completely reworked it wasn't working at all before it was doing like physical damage carried over your fire damage now it's actually working um it seems pretty good I'll, i won't go through them all but basically fist of fire cloth of thunder blaze of ice i think they're all pretty much playable um and pretty strong obviously blaze of ice is the weakest of the three but it's the most defensive so okay so are we uh, Dragon Talon um, was buffed, but I don't see anything about Dragon Kick. Is Dragon Kick still not able to one-tap mobs? Because I always thought if that could one-tap, it would be the most insane build in the game. Oh, Dragon Flight, I think you mean? Dragon but Flight, the, yes, the, yes, sorry. Yeah. But that you, you yeah, kick no, with your boots. It's just, it's a joust. It's just a reposition. That's yeah. all it really is. So, dra like, Dragon Talon is the one that does the converts to fire damage, and that is able yeah. to one-shot everything, but you're not jumping around like crazy. No, yeah. no. I always thought if if yeah. Dragonflight could be buffed more, yeah. yeah, you'd be flying around and just it'd be the coolest thing in the world. Um, uh, what? What is this thing about Blade Dance? Oh, it's because they they changed more things about Whirlwind again. Uh, yeah, they're just kind of nerfing it a little bit. Um, uh, because right now or before, basically all you needed to do was build a Chaos, and you're good to go. And you could instantly, with a chaos and nothing else, well, you know, defensive gear, right, you could right. run into maps right away. So they're just trying to tune that down a little bit that you actually have to build some gear before you can start mapping with it. Okay. So really the only change. Um, Barbarian, we have a lot of changes. I want to talk about this one because I had no idea because... It's one of those issues of groupthink. I want to say there was an issue with groupthink again, which had to do with the next hit delay on Bone Spears and people being convinced it was still double hitting. I'm not going to say it can't double hit anymore, but it must be in a very rare situation. And it's just something where it's really easy to not break out of what you assume to be true because you just look for, you just kind of trick yourself into thinking it's happening. So with Whirlwind, Everybody thought range adder worked, which is why you'd use a war pike and it would be way, way bigger. But it was capped at two, which meant it was basically mm -hmm. as big as a zerker axe. But didn't we all think if you used a war pike, it was a bigger whirlwind? Yeah, I mean, your thick is bigger. Should it have more things? <laughs> but I mean, these were conversations we've had before. I know for a fact. Yeah. And yes, using a war pike isn't just bad because it has a lot of damage to it, but. Your whirlwind was not bigger, but now whirlwinds with pole arms will actually be way bigger, which actually scares me because it was already almost big enough to do a whole hallway. So I feel like yeah. whirlwind barb might next season, even if you're doing the open wound version budget or just damage in game, it could be a problem actually. You think it's going to be pretty good? I agree. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think it's really cool. The one one topic on whirlwind, which Knight still hasn't answered me on, but he mentioned before that it's going to. It also affects the mercenaries whirlwind. Um, I don't think that's actually true uh, because mercenaries don't actually get a range adder from weapons. They have a fixed range adder based on mob. So unless that value is above two, it won't matter. Which I no. don't. 
Yeah, because the, so, the Barbarian's yeah. Rage Adder is one, I believe. Because yeah, so, Act 2 is two. Yeah, so it won't act. So I think that was just maybe a miss. Be mis but misspoke. So just I think if you're using one hand or short or long on a mercenary, it's the same. Yeah. But well, it's minor, it's minor topic. Yeah. I mean, it's really easy in this game to miss something when you're speaking, even if you know it. And yeah. I'm sure Canite knows that. So who knows? Maybe he fixed it, or maybe it is just forgot it in the moment. Uh, anything else yeah. you want to talk about with Barbarian? No, I mean they got a little bit of buffs across the yeah. board. Kind of, they were kind of hurting a little bit. So. Um, I think it's overall pretty pretty okay for them. I think Whirlwind's going to be the build. I think Bleed Whirlwind is, is strong, like you said. I think that's probably where we're going to see it. Hopefully people use Frenzy with Whirlwind. I get frustrated when they don't, but we'll see. People don't like to use two buttons, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a build that's been literally S at the very worst for seasons now called Dark Pact, and like two, three people play it every season, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a pain. Okay, so going um, on to Dru Druid, I want to. I, have, you. I yeah. have some things to talk about actually. For one, I saw Shockwave. I think Shockwave is close to being a great mapper, especially safe. But I think if you combine it with Vigor and Hustle, because your damage is high enough to consistently two shot mobs easily, and getting the one shot is kind of hard. So I think you should just focus on movement speed, especially now with Hunger being a bit better. Now, speaking about Hunger, I don't see the open wounds damage as being that significant, but it is nice to have a higher chance. I think they should just bump the numbers up a bit, but I don't know, maybe it'd be a problem on some build. Now, when we go to summons... Um... <laughs> Okay, they severely nerfed Spirit Wolf, maybe because everybody was finally starting to realize that Dire Wolves suck, and they nerfed Dire Wolves a tiny bit budget, and so now with the huge nerf to Spirit Wolves, Dire Wolves do do significantly more damage, but they were still nerfed, but Grizzlies are absolutely insane. And I don't think Grizzlies are good enough to carry with just the Helm and Grizzlies, but they are literally one of the best summons in the game, and I think they might be better than Valkyries now, barring the fact that you could get very lucky with Valkyrie gear and get Crushing Blow, Deadly Strike, and things like that. But I think the average Grizzly is now better than your average Valkyrie, hands down, even comparing two to three. Um, with these Sages, uh, they are still invincible. Poison Creeper can be hit, but they kind of go under the ground for the most part, so they aren't really as bad. Um, and then I don't know about the other changes. If you know anything about World, um, Wolf or Wind, I think what I would say is the only one is Fireclaw. Um, Fireclaw was an incredibly good like single target bosser type thing, and it's only been buffed since then. So I think we're going to see some cool Fireclaw stuff coming out. Um, House Slayer was also um, that's right. And wasn't Fireclaw buffed? actually yeah. kind of good at mapping anyways? Like kind of. Yeah, good. it was pretty. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of good. Like you're not, you're like AOE, sing, like melee range, but it, yeah. it's pretty good. It, like it was pretty reasonable, but it was really good for declone and such. So with just straight buffs across, it's going to be uh, very strong. And the house layer change is really good for it. I believe you hit max frames on wolf or bear now with um, with that specific weapon. So that could be pretty good to actually run a wolf version. Um, of, of Fireclaw. Typically, it was always Bear before, so... Right, because Bears get that ridiculous three frames per attack thing. Yeah. Okay, so moving on the Necromancer? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so uh, Bone Spear. We kind of touched on this a little bit. The hitbox was increased, which had problems with multi-hitting mobs unless they had Last Collide, which there were ways around that. As of now, I'm in camp. It hits once. And Bubbles... I'm not saying you're wrong, but I would really need to see like how it could consistently hit twice. Maybe it's possible, but if you think about one three five and now one six, that has to be a very specific mob and like angle of attack. Um, Max Golem, I've already talked about this a bunch, so maybe we don't need to talk about it much. All golems have a reason to be ran now. I still don't think clay golems will be that useful for most situations, like just mapping, but they'll be even better at what they did before, slightly, and like I think there's an idea of using a little bit of clay golem even for bossing, and then switching to blood golems. And, uh, oh, right, we should talk about this. Why don't you bring up the fire golem, um, golem mastery synergy? Yep, yeah, sure. So Golem, so in, I guess since it, we didn't done one since beta, so in beta they fixed the um, yeah. entire masteries around um, Fire Golems to actually work again for Auras, which it never did. 
um, well, at least since the rework, um, and it was way too strong. So they had to kind of nerf that. They nerfed it, and the oh, Golem I Mastery... Synergy... It, it yeah. clearly didn't work before. It's just Fire Golems yeah. were actually that good. And in my defense, I never went max Fire Golem. I always put a lot of points into LR, but there was probably a slightly less than 40 points wasted so just imagining yeah. that build with i don't know just some revives yeah. it's yeah silly okay go yeah, ahead it's silly. my defense is i never played it so. <laughs> um, <laughs> no but uh yeah so then they you know they nerfed it which it absolutely needed yeah uh, but then the golem Dude. mastery wasn't working so yeah go yeah. ahead it, it was it was two shotting t3s but two pulses yeah, would kill they're... most mobs in a T3 from one fire golem. So yes, it was it was insane. Yeah. yeah. So and then right before the end of beta, it still wasn't quite working because golem mastery was only giving you more golems, wasn't yeah. actually increasing your aura damage. They fixed that for open beta, but they reduced the synergy percentage. So the net result at a, at a hundred points is the exact same as when it didn't work. But now when you do a 40 point build like 20 fire golems 20 golem masteries you're actually getting that synergy bonus so you can run a bit of hybrid i'll let you go into that in a second but i still strongly think a 100 point golem build is super good and what i would personally do because you you have a lot of reasons to run blood for certain content clay for certain content and fire and it's just no downside across that especially with large charms I think large charms for fire goals is probably going to be used anyway since you get so much plus skills on necro but i mean there's a you'll have some pretty strong golems across the board so i um, like it basically i don't have a problem with what you're saying but i think the one thing i would say is is 20 cm to me looks really good now and i think for any player out there who doesn't like using multiple curses ignore it um, but just the fact that you can use Blood, Clay, Fire, Cola Mastery and get close to 20 CM, maybe you have to cut a little bit of points early on, it basically just gives you the options to do anything you want at any point with curses. But if you're lazy and know you're not going to do that, maybe at least get 10 CM, which can help you boss way better than just your one curse. So keep that in mind. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I will, I guess, add to that because I think that's a good point, and that brings up the other one is for your dominion if you're gonna do that don't get like plus three fire golem on your dominion get all the other things like get um you know lr for example uh blood warp or um bone armor like get the other skills that you have to put some points into so that you can put more things into the cm or your golems because you're gonna cast your first five golems with your snapshot wand anyway so losing three on your six golem doesn't doesn't matter you should be going for all these secondary skills on your dominion if you're going to build a dominion saving points from blood warp is basically almost basically saving points from blood warp lower resist decrepify or bone armor will add up to the amount of you lose from like let's say fire golem it's it's going to be just better even if you're lazy and don't like to swap too much yep. i still think it's going to be the best idea and at least go okay you got plus three fg but you got bone armor and lower resist that would still be a great base but just get two of those other skills to save skill points because it is a skill point hungry build um and then bone armor gets 10 percent defense for hard point i have no idea why they did this bone armor is one of the best defensive abilities in the game and i think as is it might legitimately be the best defensive ability in the game Energy Shield got a lot of work, and I think Energy Shield is probably better now, but Bone Armor has to be number two. If someone said that I had to put a, an actual bet on Season 10 before the patch comes came out about any skill that was going to get changed, I would have said that Bone Armor was getting nerfed. I thought they that might the actually... Thing I, was... <laughs> I thought they might change That's it the to... the only thing I was confident about. Yeah, I thought they might three, change right? it to two, or which two. would just, yeah. right, and it would just completely, not kill it, like there would still be a reason to have it, and energy would still be useful, but like, it would go from being, duh, to, oh, I gotta think about this. Yeah, exactly, so, to see that change, <laughs> crazy to me, but, I mean, defense necros now. Dude, Even cooler. So and and you're convinced you can still do T3s as defense poison nova, which we can talk about real quickly. Yeah, so the poison nova, twelve to ten percent, looks pretty bad for a lot of people. I know it's frustrating, <laughs> but T1s you will never notice. T2s 
probably not going to well, notice T3. You could go real quickly. You could go pretty budget on T1, and technically that budget would be a little tougher to get, but it, it, you'll still be able to do yeah. it. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that Pinova players need to understand is that you really have to look at the map reses and the mobs that are in it and select the maps you want to do. Some are significantly easier, regardless of the tier than the other ones, based on the mobs they have, especially early if you're willing to skip things like Siege Beast, for example. Um, you know, Bastion, like it's T2 now, Siege Beasts are kind of annoying to kill, but everything else in there you can one-shot super early. So really early on, just skip those and kill everything else and slowly move up. I mean, there's a reason when I was playing it for like seven seasons in a row, I played ROB only. I mean, it was a, a good map for speedrunning later, but I mean, it was kind of, if you didn't bother with the corpulence early, you could kill everything else in one and, shot. It was just the corpulence. Yeah. And you still could basically kill the corpulence in game. The champs and elites, maybe you'd skip, and, yeah. but that's still okay. Someone was talking yeah. about how there was a map that had two immunities for the element they ran. I wish I remembered this. And they would just skip yeah. those two because the map was that good regardless. So this goes to hardcore real quickly. Just in the fact, Kieran, I liked your content, but don't chase down every mob because it takes so much longer, like with Shockwave to kill one enemy. So if you have to do it, you have to do it. But honestly, just, you know, kill most things and move on. You'll get more stuff. Yeah, it's, you know, early on, like first couple days, I play different than what I say here because I will go through and clear most of a map because you don't have a lot of maps and you want to kill yeah. things so you can actually get maps. Once sure. you start getting maps, you are overflowing with maps. You end up with hundreds of maps extra. Just just do what's fast and efficient. Yeah. Uh, and, but early on, you got to be. Also, after the first few days, it's really easy to change your favorite map or a map you don't like for your favorite map that somebody else has and they want that map. And you can usually, you know, trade five to five and stuff like that. So it's really not a problem eventually. Yeah. It's I mean, what I usually do on the trade site is I put up the map I don't like, whatever it is. Like, I don't play this map at all. I just put it up there. And I just list all the maps I play and I post it and forget about it. Someone eventually messages you. It's like, oh, I like that map for PA Heat or whatever it is. And they'll trade you. Yeah. Like, it's pretty reasonable. And and usually I just drop every map I don't like that I have. And they drop every map that I like that they have. And if it doesn't add up, I don't care. I mean, if it's like <laughs> one for 10, maybe I'd say something. But usually it's close enough that it's just, you know, keep moving you weren't gonna run them anyway <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna Both run them. <laughs> exactly um so yeah. paladin i watched avengers clear again thanks to kieran um it seems really really good budget and mid game because it does so much damage but in game i think it will always have speed issues but i think it's okay for a build to be really good early and then fall off because i think if paladins could move fast and use vengeance it would just it would be like a, a new stomp build. Yeah, I am a little bit, let's say, uneducated on some of the nuances, but I believe it's possible to get a really good one really late, but you're going to need those vengeance charms, like those like flat Ellie charms, which are very hard to get because nobody keeps them. As in to but also clear fast? Because damage isn't a problem. Yeah, it seems to with the new chain, I think. But... Mm. I'm not sure. I just people are talking about it. I don't know what we'll see, but maybe if you could actually run vigor and hustle and then have enough damage to still one shot, that would be insane. Yeah, some options. I'm sure someone's gonna pull something out pretty cool there. Um, did you want to talk about other paladin stuff at all? Um, I'm trying to go through it. I think nothing too exciting from what I know. I mean, cleansing aura is kind of cool that it now provides five curse resistance at level one, additional one for every two levels at top point. That's kind of cool now for like plague, for example. You're going to get some curse resistance for free off of that rune word um, or any other source of cleansing you may have, which is really strong. So you're, um, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and cleansing Holy is sword. actually pretty nice. Yeah. Cleansing is pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. How about cleansing? Holy Sword, I'm not too sure about. I saw a lot of back and forth about some bugs with it. I don't really want to say too much because I don't know where it's going to land. But yeah, I think Vengeance is kind of the, the big change for Pallies. I know Charge got a bunch of changes, right? They kind of fixed a lot of the bugs and improved it. I didn't get to test it in beta, so I'm not sure if it really fixed all the rubber banding issues and, and such it was having. If it did, then there's going to be a lot of really cool builds with Charge, but that time will tell on that one, the live servers. 
I think if charge ever gets fixed and um, the damage auras are a little stronger, charge paladin would be their fastest mapper by a large margin, and it would maybe compete for top five. Yeah, I think it has a lot of potential for sure. Um, yeah. It's just people just hate it because sometimes you get rubber banded or desynced and it's just frustrating. So yeah. if no, that's fixed, yeah. Um, did you want to talk about utility and party auras real quickly, all the changes that happened to it? Because I did think that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, they rever reverted. Uh, no, I mean, I was kind of, when I saw the change, I was kind of excited. So I'm like, that's going to change a lot of things and maybe we get some, you know, we get some pretty uh, interesting, you know, builds out of it and changes and people doing procs. Really what happened, I guess, to summarize is oh. that we had... Do you think the average, yeah. the average PD2 player does not want to think and have to deal with interesting yeah. changes, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's why it redacted. <laughs> but basically, they wanted so your rune word auras were only going to have yeah. base level radius, and you needed hard points to actually increase that. So it made paladins much more favorable to be in your party group, which yeah. they kind of already were for huge convictions and stuff anyway. But it made things like infinity less good for you know, long range mapping builds. The problem was, is that it didn't affect any Nova builds because you're just stomping and that's the the worst abusers of those to begin with. So it kind of didn't do what the devs wanted it to do. So I think they will read, look at something along those lines later, but where to land, I'm, I'm not sure. I do think there could be a change because like infinity, like it's like the radius is pretty big and it, pretty strong it has been forever right so some change there could be interesting uh if you want to talk about an item that has literally shaped the meta around it literally since vanilla infinity is one of the biggest ones and so yeah would it be nice to see that changed i think people have been asking for that for a while but yes you'd have to do it in a way that doesn't benefit already good builds and hurt builds that are some of them are still good like corpse explosion was still good but some builds would be really hurt by it. Yeah, and I don't have the solution fully, but no. I mean, with yeah. things like maps and all the tiers of maps and things like this, there's a lot of solutions they can find to make, you know, running not into immunes everywhere, you know, reasonable and ways to break immunes and other assets. So I think there's something there, but we'll have to wait and see. But they kind of went away from that, and we'll see when it comes back. There were supposedly going to look at it again next season i would say this if facets broke immunities they probably have to change facets and i do kind of like that facets always work at full effect but yeah, that's also I really do. strong but it's it's also kind of a cool thing because some players don't understand that that they always work at full effect but again i sometimes you change things to and reduce how interesting a game is to make it better overall for more builds so it, it, it's just there's it's always a, a plus and a minus okay someone's going to win someone's going to lose even if it's just game design wise yeah yeah which is kind of like fire golems i think fire golem changed some people on my channel were really not happy with it that they killed hybrid builds but it's like mm -hmm. to me their changes to golems this season were so good and then we did get Fire Golem Synergy added on Golem Mastery that, to me, it didn't matter. Like, sometimes yeah. you take what you can get. Yeah, I mean, to me, the end goal with Fire Golems always was to have a build that worked on its own. Right? Like, <laughs> it was, yes. Like, <laughs> Although, we, technically, we, it did we, work. We, technically, it did yeah. work. Well, that was it before the... Work. Okay, that was, again, yeah. that was back when the base damage was a bit higher. So back in our defense yeah. a little bit, base damage was nerfed since then. But yeah, it's, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I think we, the hybrid stuff kind of came out because of how strong it was, but then yeah, it, like, to make it work for late game. So, like, it, cool, we have it again. I don't think it was necessary, but people are happy. So they, Real I'm, I'm happy with how they did it, with that they added it in and reduced the synergy yeah. so the end damage is the exact same. So no one can really complain about it. Oh, are you kidding me? People no. are going to complain. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quickly, hot take. How good would Fire Golems be at Tier 2 Rathma D clone 30 seconds go? <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think they have, like, okay, T0, T1... Okay, I, I, come on. Yeah, it. they're going to crush yeah. it. Exactly. He, 
D2, it's really going to depend if you can get the gear to make it work. Like, the issue is if you have, like... Okay, okay, a, we're not talking have... perfect gear. We know they can do it. Do yeah. you think it will compete for a top three spot? Let's make it a little harder. I think not. Okay. I personally don't because if I take, like, a level 55 Fire Golem fully synergized with very little into mastery, let's say only, like, 30% because you're, you're going to need res places. You can't really do it. Yeah. That's about a 5K aura. Per, which is pretty okay, but that's level That'll... 55 gold, which is probably unreasonable. It's probably, let's say, 50, uh -huh. so 4.6k aura. Decent, but you have no pierce, so they're all going to be sitting at 30 red, so that's going to be reduced by 30%. But again, it's, if if they're only killing it, ads and you switch to blood golems for D clone, yeah. still no. I think that's it. I think it might be possible, but I think that's where you have to drop your mastery down because you're not going to be able to sit. You want your bloods doing damage too. So, I think will it be able to kill it? Yes, I think so. I think you'll be able to T two with the golems between all the golems. Yeah. Will it compete for top three? Uh, I'm going to say no, but it depends on how much competition there is because if there's not a lot of people doing it, someone will do it, but you can do it very quickly budget with Desecrate. I mean, um, was it Kareem? One of the guys did it on Hardcore and Trang's that D2 on Desecrate. Dude, hardcore players are built different, okay? I guess playing yeah. that safe in maps, it might look stupid, but then it means you're better at doing hard content. Yeah. <laughs> so That's like, very impressive. That's yeah, Desecrate and Bone Armor, no revives. It's just really strong for the fight. It's just kind of easy for that fight. So mm. I don't think you can beat it with Golems just because the amount of gear you'll need uh, to get the plus skills up there. Uh, but, you know, it's an RNG game. So if you get the, if you land it, you maybe it'll get it. But I personally don't think so okay. in the race. I think, it'll, I think you'll be able to do it, though. So we're Necros, and we got distracted, but we never talked about Sork. And <sighs> I think... Sorks are just, they're the class that is the hardest to balance because Teleport is the best skill in the game. Blood Warp is really good, but Teleport is just better. Not just because of the way the skill is designed now, I get it with the damage penalty, but just the fact that Sorceresses have such a good cast animation that only Barbs can compare with. So just the fact they can, cat, they can Teleport every 7 frames means their Teleport, which they get free, should probably have a, some sort of downside to it. But when I look at it, I got to admit, maybe they went a little too far this season because it was too good. But now do you think it's too bad? I think, like, teleport, I think, is still great. I don't oh, think there's an issue yes. with that. It's no, teleport's strong, still but... great. But, like, for, for mapping, okay, obviously teleport's yeah. always going to be the best vanilla ability in the game for LED yeah. content. But for mapping, do you think it's a little much? I still think for mapping, it is still fine. But I think in combination with the Nova stuff that they did, it didn't reduce the like Nova and Frost Nova pretty significantly. Um, to oh, so you think that, that the two together is too much? Yeah, I think two together is too much for those two builds. But things like the Combustion Teleport and um, the other like frozen orb or whatever else you're going to do glacial spike those are still going to work but the best two were frost nova and nova they all got nerfed and then teleport also got nerfed so like you know it's the p nova topic where nova once you get insane gear is still going to be able to do what it used to do but now you need that gear to get there so it's before you hit the the price of entry was 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 cheaper and you could run t1s into t2s into t3s but now it's a bit a bit much and even do t1s because um, that's a lot yeah. of damage nerf on nova actually <laughs> yeah yeah they had it reduced pretty significantly nova and frost nova yeah. i didn't get to play them in beta people said frost nova is the better of the two now because at least you're defensive and stuff and you can kind of sit there novaing without dying yeah. because you're at least chilling them I don't know. We'll have to kind of see on that. The one cool change is the energy shield no longer removed yeah. when you had zero mana. So before, if you got you had zero mana and you got hit, your energy shield went away. So then if you fought it again, you didn't have an energy shield. If you got attacked again, you just die. Now it's it's still on. So once you get mana again, it's going to be able to absorb that. So that's a really huge change, actually, for survivability on the Sorks. But they lost a significant amount of damage. And... 
For speed running, it has a big impact. For normal mapping, it's not that crazy because the teleport debuff is 15% all the way down. But if you wait out the duration, the penalty goes away, right? Oh, so like well, slower mapping I mean, isn't really there, but for speed mapping, it's definitely a big hit. We're obviously talking about speed mapping because we're two people who yeah. can actually play Poison Nova. And again, talking yeah. about Poison Nova, here's my stance on Poison Nova compared to the Nova skills. No one plays Poison Nova. If Poison Nova actually becomes a problem, then maybe they should nerf it. But as of now, I don't see why they would nerf a skill when five players played it last season, I think, if that. So Yeah, it was not very popular at all. It used no. to be, and it got nerfed and then people no. stopped playing it really and it's funny because it kept getting nerfed right except for the slight buff it got last season where dweb was buffed um that was the first buff it receives and and the synergy was buffed once before too yeah yeah and but honestly it... okay go, go ahead for no, no. I'll, I'll oh, my take after okay I, I was just gonna say basically it had only ever gotten nerfs until it's slight buffs and even at slight buffs it wasn't more popular and the reason for that, in my opinion, is because of the three Novas we're talking about here, it's the only one where you have to ignore immunities. Because oh, with Lightning and yeah. Frost Nova, you can actually break and run more maps. With Poison Nova, you have to basically look at the maps that have no immunities and run those unless you're going to do some weird LR proccing build or self-casting LR like a crazy person. Uh, but really, I think that's why people don't play it, because you have to avoid immunities as opposed to be able to break it people like to run all content or a vast majority of content and Enova simply can't do that unless you're willing to go slower and cast lr or find a means of proccing lr and by the way casting lr feels really bad but moving on about running yeah. maps uh, so i'm not moving on really in conjunction yeah, with same, that, same <laughs> run the fucking maps that are good for your element, even if you are Nova or Frost Nova. I don't know why players don't like doing that, but trust me, it will only yeah. make you a better player. Last thing, and then we're basically done, I think. Um, range reduced from 13 to 12. Is this tiles or yards? This is tiles, isn't it? This is this is the range would be in yard. It's yards. No, okay. radius. 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 So that's tiles. That's yeah. not a... I thought yeah. it was nerfed more than this. So did they buff it a bit? Because people were freaking out about the nerf, but that's... If it's one tile, that's very... That's not a lot smaller. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm I'm actually speaking where I should just... I have the the MPQ right beside me, okay. so I should just look okay. it up uh, while you're talking. I'll, I'll, you look uh, it up. Um, corruptions, basically, they change sockets a lot, so I can just talk about that real quickly. Um, just go over this before you play the season, because the way corruptions work on sockets is way different. It's basically going to be... I don't even know. Basically, it's harder to get more sockets, I think, right? That's what it looks like to uh, me. No, it's easier to get more sockets It's easier now. to get more sockets now. Yeah. Wow, don't trust yeah. the Skeleton King. Wow, why did they do that? Just because melee builds needed more help? Maybe. I can see that. Uh, yeah, just nicer to have, I guess. I don't know. It was kind of shitty mm. to never get the corruptions you needed, hey? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of frustrating some of them to get, but it's... Yeah, mm. it seems like they generally buffed corruptions a bit, and um, they did a lot of work on weapons. Uh, the new items, I don't think I want to go over that much. I already talked about Den Mother a bit. I never thought any of the new items were that interesting unless I missed something, which maybe I did. Oh, the new uh, the new Cold Dagger does look cool. Yeah, I can't find this. Um, yeah, the new Cold Dagger looks kind of cool. The LR proccing thing, I'm not too sure about. I really... I don't know. I'm, I'm not too excited about any of the new items. Um, besides them being new, I guess. But I don't think they're anything too too exciting no they might see some use early on though at the very least and i do think din mother is is gonna be pretty good actually mm -hmm. um dragon scale was changed significant is that a that's not a new item they just changed it a lot yeah they just changed changed it completely basically now i think it's Okay, they just buffed kind of it, it, but but they yeah. cast level 45 Hydra on block. Who's going to wait for a block to get a Hydra? But for bossing, is that going to help? 
I think when I was watching, no, it's going to be this, but when I was watching <laughs> the streams, I think what they said is that's just kind of like a nice, cool thing to have. Really what it's balanced around now is that, you know, it has that 15 to 20% fire skill damage roll on it and some flat fire. So it's actually going to be, you know, pretty good for uh, builds that want to like self-run the holy, holy fire, for example. They nerfed Dark Abyss. So like a- Why would they nerf Dark Abyss? Wow. Um, I don't think they want to have uh, boss items in the game anymore. <laughs> they kind of nerfed them all. So it's, it's going to feel really bad to find some of them. Uh, but... By the way, Uli Didician's Awakening, that item, try to put it on any build you can, if you can, because you will never die if you go max energy with that item. It is absolutely busted. You get a ton of mana, level 30 energy shield is broken. That's what I have to say about that. I can't say I used it, but I will take your word on it. You should. This time the Skeleton King is right, I promise. Also, Corpse Morn is seeing you more use than ever, so keep that in your mind on a build that can run it. I think that's kind of cool. Um, Ormus Robe was nerfed, but also buffed pretty, a little bit. No, pretty sick. It's just nerfed across the board, actually. It's easier to get 15%, though, which is kind of nice. No, it's 12 to 15 damage rolls reduced to 10 to 5. 10 to 15. Oh, they okay. Never mind. I got. I can't fucking yeah. read, can I? And then the proc procs is also nerfed because it was just the strongest item last, last season. So, any other item changes stand out? Um, uh, I was looking for Hell Slayer was the other one that I was talking about earlier, which is right. kind of cool, but I don't. She don't know where it is on here. Okay, Hell Slayer is uh way down there, but it basically they added. Minus 25 to minus 35% enemy fire resistance added to that item. So that's going to be really cool for your fire claw. Here's something cool I saw. Somebody brought up this. By the way, Blaze does, they, I I hope they can bring up the Blaze phasing thing because that would be sick. But they did buff, yeah, which I thought was interesting is they buffed uh, Gloom Trap, the belt. I just had it on my screen right here. You can actually get a 20 SCR belt now, budget, super easily in Gloom Trap, which I do think is cool. Hmm. That is cool. I actually kind of overlooked that. So that is a. Oh, I just saw somebody post it in beta or necro at some point, and I was like, oh, keep your eye on Gloom Trap if it rolls 20%, because those are super good to have early on. I think we both have to go soon. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I think we'll talk about builds and where they all land in the next one. I think it's probably good. But otherwise, I think it's. I think overall, it's a pretty good patch, I would say. I think it'll be a pretty interesting pretty interesting season based on this yeah we're we're really close to the end so if we want to go over the new rune words at any point um purity just keep that in mind that there's a new iron golem you can make out of purity uh rapture is just a big stick that hits hard and i do think it's funny that they buffed Trangle's scales <laughs> Weird, but, yeah. all right um Take it. any last thing you want to say before we close it um uh... No, I mean, I think, you know, I won't harp too much on bossing and all that kind of stuff. So I think I think it's going to be a good season. So I look forward to it. I'll be starting late, but I, I'll look forward to it. I will post. I'm working on finalizing all the calcs for all the necro skills. So I will have them. I posted a fire golem one already, but I'll pin it and such. And I'll have those all done this week. Okay. Leave. And my last note is I am going to actually legitimately try to play a little bit next season because i didn't play last season at all but i think i'll have time to actually get to like level 95 again and hopefully give some gear to you guys because i just want to play budget fire golems because i think it'll actually be really good i think you're gonna have to post the name of your character into your youtube description so that everyone can track to see if you've actually played and got past level 80 i think are you you think last season i got the 80 are you kidding me i think i got the nightmare <laughs> Yeah, that's how you put it there so you can track it on the site and be like, nah, he's not playing. Don't Dude, I, I'm just going to fucking pay some Korean to play a character for me and be like, we solos now the rank one Necromancer. How about that? Famous last words. Famous last words. All right, Skelly King out, guys. GG. Later. Yeah. Come and play with us, Danny.